Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, we are going to discuss the factors that shift the IS schedule. So in this there are several factors that affect the IS schedule. Uh, we summarize it into narrow down to three major factors. Uh, one is changes in government spending and second one is changes in taxes and third one is autonomous changes in investment. So coming to the first part changes in government spending. Uh, I assume that uh, in this diagram the initial uh, level of government spending is this much uh, that, that means G naught and the initial level of investment is also this much. So accordingly our initial IS curve is uh, this one the first one that uh, run mark this one this is the initial IS curve and when there is a government expenditure and then the curve will be shifting uh, rightwards. So you can see that the curve will be shifting this much. And as a result, you can also see that the saving and increase in saving and tax also must increase and the corresponding level of increase in income is this much. So here uh, what we have shown here is that the initial position, suppose the when the rate of interest is this much, uh, initial level of income is this much and then what we can see that uh, when there is uh, increase in government spending, for example, denoted by G, then uh, plugging using the IS equation you can see that when del G change, change there is a increase in government spending that means uh, del G then the Y will increase Y will increase uh, you can see that uh, del Y by uh, del G uh, is equal to uh, 1 by 1 minus B uh, so that means del Y del Y is equal to 1 by 1 minus 1 minus B uh, times uh, del G. Right. This is what we have seen in the equation. So here you can see that when the rate of interest decrease, the, that is fine, the, the rate of interest uh, remain constant or the uh, decrease here uh, remain constant. Then you can see that uh, when there is increase in government spending, uh, the GDP uh, Y will, the del Y will increase 1 by 1 minus B times, right, 1 by 1 minus B times uh, del G. So that distance is uh, this much, so uh, Y will be increasing this much this is called this is the del y so you can see that uh, is curve will be shifting rightwards uh, if there is uh, government expenditure increase in uh, government expenditure if in contrast to this if there is decrease in government expenditure or um, suppose they may you can it's better to say uh, they are, are compared to the previous level uh, previous year suppose this year there is a decrease in government expenditure or there is increase in tax is a better way to say then the curve will be shifting uh, leftwards. So coming to here uh, which I have just shown in the previous uh, slide that means changes in government expenditure as a result uh, increase the increase in income uh, del y uh, is, is this much 1 by 1 minus b times del g. Second factor is changes in taxes suppose uh, there is increase in taxes. When government increases the tax, then you can see that uh, here the curve, this curve will be shifting leftwards. Then as a result, uh, you can see that the IS curve will be shifting leftwards. And how much it will shift, how much will be the decline in income, then correspondingly you can see at the same level of a rate of, rate of interest that they are not initial equilibrium position was A. Now when the government increase tax, then the this curve diagram that the uh, saving plus uh, tax uh, diagram is shift leftwards and correspondingly uh, you can see that uh, del Y will be declining. How much will be the decline in del Y? Uh, this can be denoted by this. The change in del Y is equal to 1 by 1 minus B times minus B uh, del T. So that means uh, this much is the uh, decline uh, in income. So uh, decline in income is going to be uh, this much. Uh, so that means this area, uh, this decline, decline in income uh, that is the del y, we can see that is negative now. 
uh, there is a decline in y this amounts to uh, this much 1 by 1 minus b uh, times minus b times delta t. Another factor that affect the I schedule is the change autonomous changes in investment. Uh, for example, due to changes in uh, business expectations. For example, if there is a favorable expectation, so then you can see that at the given rate of interest, uh, there will be increase in autonomous component of investment. So as a result, the IS curve will be shifting rightwards. It is almost equal to the interpretation is uh, almost equal to similar to del G because del G is also an autonomous uh, variable or uh, autonomous variable increase in government expenditure is autonomous variable. Similarly, here also the changes in business expectation because of that autonomous investment also increases the IS curve uh, shift rightward. Similarly, if there is adverse expectation for example, war or any other kind of uncertainty in the economy, then the IS curve will be autonomous uh, component of investment will uh, decline then the IS curve will be uh, shifting leftwards. To summarize, these, uh, these are the key points that we discussed in the in this session. That means uh, IS schedule slopes downward, and the other factors. Uh, I'm just noting it down. Uh, these are the other factors that we uh, discuss uh, in this session. Uh, these are the major summary points. Uh, now let's bring both IS model, IS and LM models together. Uh, combine that uh, ISLM models combine. What we are I am showing here is the IS equation uh, where product market is in equilibrium that means I is equal to S, investment is equal to saving. Uh, this is the IS equation and the LM equation where money supply is equal to money demand uh, that the money market equilibrium. This is the LM equation uh, both the, you are now familiar with both equation. And in order to make uh, both when the macroeconomic equilibrium where product market both when both product market and money market that is IS and LM when both markets are uh, in order to find out both markets are in equilibrium uh, you can find out the equilibrium level of rate of interest and uh, equilibrium level of income where both product market and uh, LM markets are in equilibrium. Uh, in order to find out what you can do that equal and equate uh, IS equation uh, equal to LM equation that means uh, you can directly uh, either estimate IS and LM separately then and then equate or you can directly uh, equate like this and find out what is the equilibrium level of income. So there are two ways either you can keep uh, solve it in terms of uh, equilibrium level of income that is y naught uh, equating uh, this uh, uh, is equation with uh, uh, lm equation you will be finding at equilibrium level of income uh, you will be ending up with uh, uh, this equation or alternatively you can equate uh, solve it for equilibrium level of rate of interest uh, then you will uh, come up with uh, this equation. Uh, this is uh, algebraically uh, we can find out the ISO, ISLM model uh, come together that is means when uh, uh, product market both product market and money market in equilibrium. So diagrammatically we can show uh, in this way that means the LM curve uh, and the IS curve and this is the equilibrium position. Uh, at this position you can see that both product market uh, that means uh, IS, IS curve and uh, both product market and money market are equilibrium and the equilibrium level of rate of interest is R0 and equilibrium level of income is Y0. So at this uh, rate of interest R0 and Y0 we can see that both product market and money market are in equilibrium. You can also do some numerical exercise uh, in order to find out the equation for the uh, IS curve and the LM schedule and as well as calculating the equilibrium value. So here uh, given some values uh, for uh, relevant variables and write the equation for the IS and LM schedules and similarly find the equilibrium values for income and interest rate. So here is the solution the IS curve can be written as uh, y is equal to this, uh, this is IS curve uh, written in terms of uh, income and the LN curve can be written like this. This is what we did that you can plug these values all these values in the IS equation and LM equation then you will find out uh, you can 
come up with uh, this final IS equation, IS curve, this equation and uh, this LM equation corresponding to reflecting all these values. So, the equilibrium value of output here is that then you need to equate uh, IS curve with uh, IS curve to LM curve then finally you will like come up with um, equilibrium level of income in this uh, given these values is with this one is much uh, 1733 and the equilibrium uh, interest rate is 11.33. Further if we make some more change then also we can we can find out further. So, this is the uh, some more problem set uh, this is the answer for that uh, in this uh, solution that the IS curve is vertical uh, that YS Y is 2003. So, LN curve remains unchanged and given the equilibrium value of output the equilibrium rate of interest is uh, 17, 17 percentage. Uh, moving further in the what if there is some disequilibrium in the ISLM model. So, in order to understand let us review both uh, LN curve and IS schedule uh, separately. So, you know that uh, each and every point along the LM curve you can see that uh, money supply is equal to uh, money demand right that means money market uh, is at equilibrium. What if we look at uh, any other points other than this equilibrium point either above this LM schedule or below this LM schedule suppose look at this point I am looking uh, here suppose uh, this is the corresponding value of rate of interest um, corresponding rate of interest for example R1 um, uh, this one this one is the uh, corresponding y1. So, in this point what you can see that uh, in this LM schedule we are going to say that this point that for example, uh, point A is never going to be the equilibrium point. You know why? Because you look at this at this point you can say that the equilibrium point should be here corresponding value, but you can see that at this point the money demand because as kind of here uh, you can see that money demand is less than uh, money supply because what you can see here is that uh, at this point A uh, the rate of interest is greater than the corresponding the, the necessary at the given level of income that y1 uh, this given level of income y1 uh, at this level when the uh, money market should be equilibrium in order to become a, for the equilibrium of the money market the corresponding level of rate of interest is R star. But what you can see here is that the rate of interest is R1 that is above the equilibrium rate of interest. Uh, when the rate of interest is above this that means what you can see that rate of interest is relatively high. And we have seen that uh, when the rate of interest is relatively high it means the opportunity cost of holding money or opportunity cost of demanding money is very high. right? because when the market is providing high rate of interest people can uh, reduce uh, maybe there is no point in keeping more money for uh, transaction purpose because the opportunity cost is very high instead they would uh, prefer to keep their money uh, in the bond market. Uh, so, as a result uh, you can see that uh, there will be a decline in the demand for money. So, as a result the equilibrium position will be attained to uh, that means it is uh, no, not uh, the in this, this point you can see that money demand uh, is less than money supply. And finally, the you know, this, this point cannot be equilibrium point. Look at any point below this LM curve for example, this point. So, that means here what uh, here we can see that point B. Uh, this also not going to be the uh, equilibrium point look at for example, the corresponding uh, rate of interest that means relatively the rate of interest is low that means the opportunity cost of holding money or demanding money is low. So, as a result people will demand more money for transaction purpose. So, you can see that when people are demanding more money for transaction purpose demand for bond will come down. Uh, demand for bond will come down, bond price will decrease, then the rate of interest will increase, right. 
So finally, with the point B, this, this point is not going to be the equilibrium. Uh, finally, there will be an upward pressure for the rate of interest to increase. So similarly, point A, which we just uh, discussed a couple of minutes before, this also never not going to be the um, uh, equilibrium position. At this point, you can see money demand is less than money supply, and people will be demanding uh, more bonds. The bond price will increase. As a result, rate of interest will decrease. So that means there is a downward pressure on uh, rate of interest. So finally, this is going to be the uh, equilibrium position where money demand is equal to money supply. So any point, for example, this C or uh, this D or any point, the, for example, E, these are not going to be the uh, equilibrium position. So if in the, all this case, you can see that if this is, there is upward pressure on rate of interest or any other point above. Uh, above the LN curve, there is downward pressure on rate of interest so that uh, money demand is equal to money supply. Look at the IS curve now. So, in the IS curve, all point along the IS per curve, you know that all each of these are the equilibrium position where investment is equal to saving, right? Investment is equal to saving. Now, look at for example, this position, uh, for example, this position, uh, point A. Uh, in this position, you can say that rate of interest is low, corresponding that you can see the rate of interest is uh, low. When the rate of interest is low, you know that the investment will increase, there is increase in investment. But uh, you can see that when the low rate of interest, high investment, then in order to become investment is equal to saving, uh, actually you, we need more income actually, this much income is required. So, but here you can see that income is only uh, here uh, R1, uh, Y1 only, actually required ingre increase in uh, income is Y2. So, when uh, looking at this point below uh, this IS schedule, for example, A uh, here, uh, when the rate of interest is R1, uh, there is increase in investment, uh, then actually we need more saving. But at the given level of income Y1, you can see that uh, saving is less than investment that is alternatively uh, investment is greater than uh, saving here. So, here you can see that at this point we can see that uh, investment is greater than saving. So, investment we already said that investment is called uh, expenditure that means expenditure uh, is greater than uh, income or aggregate supply. So, as a result there will be uh, pressure on income to increase then you can see that uh, since actually at this point investment is greater than saving, so the saving has to be increased which can be generated by uh, increase in income. So that means there is a uh, market will put more pressure uh, on income to increase so that uh, required amount of saving can be uh, generated. So there is going to be a horizontal pressure uh, for the market to uh, for the income to be increased. So look at for example any other position for example here. Uh, position B here, what you can see that um, uh, the corresponding the rate of interest is uh, very high. Uh, so, as a result, you can see that uh, investment is uh, less than saving. Any point above this IS curve is investment is uh, greater, investment is less than saving. So, there that means expenditure is less than Y. So, there is a downward pressure on income. So, actually. In, here there is more savings, right? On the upward, any position above this IS curve, you can see that saving is greater than investment. So that's a result. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, either uh, rate of interest will decrease or uh, income will uh, in uh, decrease. So there will be the pressure like this. So translating, putting everything uh, in one diagram. So here you can see that the equilibrium position is E. Uh, where both IS curve and LN curve is uh, both product market and money market uh, in equilibrium. Any other point you can look for example A, point A where you can see that uh, just look at a LM schedule where you can see that uh, here money demand is less than uh, money supply. And also you can see that look at the leftward side of uh, IS curve where you can see that investment is greater than saving. So there will be then downward pressure on rate of interest and uh, upward pressure that means horizontal pressure on income to increase. So that finally uh, we will be coming to this position. So similarly 
here uh, you can see that any position you can look at here uh, you can just apply the point that we discussed in the previous two diagrams and accordingly we can say that there is pressure uh, for example here there is upward pressure for the rate of interest to increase and uh, income to decrease here so we are we can see that uh, point f uh, for example uh, is not an equilibrium position here only you can see that point f you can say that money market is in equilibrium money market is in equilibrium but uh, product market uh, is not at equilibrium so uh, when at point f what you can see here is that the product market is out of equilibrium and there is pressure for output to change uh, there is pressure for uh, output to change so only at point e are where both product market and money market uh, product market and money market uh, markets in equilibrium equilibrium uh, let's now continue our discussion the policy effects uh, for example uh, increase the monetary policy what is the effects of policy monetary policy uh, on income using ISLM model and similarly what is the effects of uh, fiscal policy using ISLM model on the effects of fiscal policy on income uh, using uh, ISLM model first let's start with the monetary policy uh, let us assume uh, there is increase in money supply that means the central bank is following an expansionary monetary policy so here uh, when an expansionary monetary policy has been initiated then you can see that uh, suppose increase in money supply then we are going to see that the LN curve will be shifting to the right that we have seen in the previous discussion that means uh, when there is increase in money uh, money supply LN curve will be shifting rightwards so the transmission mechanism uh, how is affect uh, rate of interest and income uh, let us use this uh, two stage uh, transmission mechanism we, we are familiar with this one we have discussed this in the one of the previous session the transmission mechanism here is that when there is increase in money money supply in the economy people will be content with more money there will be portfolio disequilibrium there is excess supply of money uh, in the market so because of excess supply of money in the market people are content with more money and then they will invest their money their uh, new assets in uh, bond market then the um, here actually when increase in money supply uh, people are content with more money then they will demand more bond uh, so as a result the price of bond increase and as a result the rate of interest decrease right so because of the portfolio disequilibrium so when the rate of interest decrease then we are now much familiar uh, using the second channel investment channel when the rate of interest decrease then you know that uh, investment will be uh, increasing uh, when the investment is increasing uh, then you know that uh, saving must also increase then uh, due to the increase in investment you also know that income is going to increase right so that means uh, decrease in uh, rate of interest um, then y increases so y increases in bo both channel one is uh, increase in uh, investment demand uh, another is uh, due to declining rate of interest uh, here investment demand means uh, demand by firms to increase uh, demand by firms for capital goods as well as the concerned household sector also uh, demand uh, more durable goods so as a result uh, y will be increasing so representing this uh, using a diagram we can see that uh, when the LN curve uh, shift rightwards you can see that a rate of interest will decrease from R0 to R1 then as a result uh, increase income uh, will be increasing from uh, this point to this this is del Y right so the del uh, due to del R uh, you can see that del Y this much increase in income will happen the income will increase from uh, Y0 to Y1. So similarly shifts in demand function what if there is uh, more demand for money so here more demand for money means people are keeping other things remaining constant when people due to uncertainty when they are demanding more money then you can see that LN curve will be shifting uh, leftwards and then here is in this case instead of uh, this way you can write the LN curve will be uh, shifting leftwards uh, when there is uh, increase in uh, liquidity preference so the, as a result you can see that the corresponding uh, decrease in income is this much that means uh, del y is this much uh, that is decline in y 
So that means uh, this much uh, decrease in income will be there uh, due to shift in money demand function. That means increase in uh, money demand function, increase in liquidity preference. And the another point, uh, what about the real influence? Uh, when there is shift in IS schedule, what is going to happen? So let's call it um, due to fiscal policy. Uh, you know that, for example, in due to increase in government expenditure, uh, you know that IS curve will be shifting uh, rightwards. So here, what we are showing here is the IS curve uh, is shifting rightwards. The initial equilibrium position is A. When there is increase in government expenditure, the IS curve will be shifting rightwards, and the new equilibrium position is going to be here. Right, where the new intersection where the uh, IS cow that uh, this I, new IS cow will be intersecting with uh, our initial LN cow at this point that the B. So, you can see two things here. Suppose if there was uh, no LN cow at all, what you can see that increase in income uh, from here to uh, if from A it should be this much. This should be the uh, increase in uh, income that is. Uh, this distance it should be the del y but since there is money market is there uh, what we can see here is that when there is increase in government expenditure uh, we are going to see that the interest rate is going to increase how interest rate is going to increase what is the reason why increase in rate of interest here so when is curve shift the rate of interest also increase here there are two uh, reason uh, why the rate of interest increase so, you can see the rate of interest increase from R0 to R1 when uh, there is government expenditure. The force pushing up income is the increase in, uh, first we need to see the income is increasing from Y0 to Y1 and Y hat 1. Uh, why income increase? The reason why income increase is that uh, is due to the increase in aggregate demand both directly as government demand rises and then indirectly as a result of an income induced increase in consumer expenditure. Right, that, that is why our theoretical reasoning that why income is increasing. But we also see here is that uh, there is increase in rate of interest uh, because the force pushing up interest rate requires some explanation here. Uh, because we assume here that LN curve is not shifting. So, in this case, uh, we can see that at a given level of income, uh, equilibrium in the money market and therefore, in the bond market uh, is undisturbed by the government uh, spending change because there is no uh, disturbance in the LM market that, the, that means the money market, uh, money supply and money demand there is no change and it is the rise in income in response to fiscal policy shift that necessitates the interest rate adjustment. Note the point here, um, as income increases, transaction demand for money rises. So, we are going to explain why rate of interest increase here because clearly there is no disturbance in the LM market, but due to increase in government expenditure, due to government expenditure, uh, income increases that means as a result transaction demand for money rises. So, when the transaction demand for money rises, the attempt to increase transaction balance requires a decline in demand for bonds. So, remember here that uh, as a result of uh, increase in income, we can see that uh, there is increase in money demand, transaction demand for money. So, uh, when transaction money demand increases, you can see that demand for bond increases, uh, when demand for bond decreases, when the demand for bond decreases, you can see that because if here when the income increases, uh, transaction demand for money increases, uh, that means demand for bond decreases that means price of bond decreases uh, which leads to increase in the rate of interest. So, that is um, attempt to increase transaction balances requires a decline in the demand for bonds thereby decline in the price of bonds and subsequently increase in a rate of interest. So, the income induced increase in money demand and decline in bond demand causes the interest rate to rise. So, these are the two main factor, main reason that is one is uh, income induced increase in money demand and a decline in bond demand cause interest rate to rise from R0 to R1 uh, due to expansion in government expenditure due to an expansionary uh, fiscal policy. So, as a result we can say that um, 
the rate of interest has increased uh, due to the uh, increase in the rate of interest we can see that what we are expected to see actually the increase in income the del y is supposed to be uh, this much supposed to be this much this distance uh, but there is some but due to the increase in rate of interest uh, there will be decline in investment uh, decline in investment so as a result the actual increase in uh, del y is going to be uh, only this much so this is going to be the del y uh, due to um, because this one this uh, actually we are supposed to have uh, del y this much um, this much but due to increase in uh, rate of interest the actual increase in del y is going to be uh, only this much uh, this much and this is the as a result you can see that income is increase in income increase from uh, y naught to uh, y1 uh, in the next session, uh, we will continue this discussion, we will offer more explanation to this, uh, why there is increase in income is only this much, only to from Y0 to Y1. Thank you for watching this video and uh, in the next session, uh, let us uh, continue this discussion. Thank you.